Hi guys, welcome back to my channels. So today we're gonna to be making masks. I'm gonna show you how to make these from start to finish. This is um, this is a polyester fabric, um, polyester knit, and all I did was I cut out the pattern and I sewed down the middle um, and I sublimated an image on it. So I'm gonna show you how to do this from start to finish. It's really easy. Um, I used a serger for mine as you can see um, but if you don't have a serger you can use a sewing machine but if you are selling these and you're using a sewing machine just make sure that you kind of test out some um, stitch settings that will be um, best looking um, because the seams will be showing so if you are interested to learn how to make a mask from start to finish watch this video. If you're not already, make sure that you hit that subscribe button and hit the bell for notifications for every time that I do a new video. Okay, so I will link down below where I got my pattern for the mask. It's a uh, GG Fashion Designer. They have all sizes in these masks. Um, right now we're gonna make large for adults. This is the fabric that I'm using. I really love this fabric. It's thin breathable and you can sublimate on it. It is called um, scuba knit or neoprene knit or polyester knit um, and I got this actually from Hobby Lobby but you can get this from um, a number of fabric stores online so I will link down below if I can find this on HobbyLobby.com. So what I like to do is you have to make you have to cut two of these um, and that makes the full mask. So all I do is I fold over my fabric. All I do is fold my fabric in half like this. And that, that way you get two mirrored images. You can also use a weight on your pattern in case that will help you. And then I have two rotary cutters. I have the big one that I cut around, and then I have this little one for when I cut the ear part. Um, you can use scissors for the inside part, but you're not gonna be able to use a big rotary cutter for the inside of where um, these ear straps are. Trust me, I've tried it. Um, you use scissors, it's really easy. You cut a slit in the middle and you cut around, and then you will have your little cutout. Okay, so we're gonna cut out these two pieces. And that should be super quick, and then I'll show you the next step. Now I'm just gonna pin my fabric together and I'm going to put um, the pattern piece back on the fabric. And I'm gonna try to get these edges just a little cleaner. You don't have to do this step. Um, if you are planning to make these to sell, I would do the extra step just so that you have a good product to sell but if you just have if you're just making this for you or a family member um, you can skip this step so as you can see this little rotary cutter kind of helps you with your control a little better so what I'm going to do now is I am going to lay my pattern back on um, my fabric I'm gonna make sure my fabric is even. I'm gonna lay this back on the pattern, or on the fabric, and then I am going to pin it. Or actually, in my case, I'm going to clip it. 
You can use pins or you can use these clips. I like to use these clips because they don't poke any holes in your fabric. Okay, now that I have this pinned all the way around, I'm gonna take my rotary cutter and I'm going to cut the inside. And I'm gonna use my small rotary cutter. And take your time with this um, because you want nice clean cuts. Okay, as you can see, I accidentally, my rotary cutter went a little too far and um, it cut a little too much. But these are for me, so it's not a big deal. But obviously, if you were selling these, um, you'd want to cut another piece. But just for the purposes of this video, I'm not going to cut another piece. So now that you have your two pieces, um, I like to sublimate on them before they are sewn. Um, you can sew them first, and then you can. what you can do is you can have it folded like this. You can sublimate one side, you can flip it over, and then do the other side, and that way the thread kind of gets um, some color on it as well instead of just having a black or a white thread, if that's what you're using. However, if you do it that way, then that's a two-step process. You have to do the one side and do the other. It's quicker, and if you're gonna be making these to sell them, it's actually going to be quicker for you if you just set the two pieces on the heat press, cover it with the paper that, um, with the sublimation design that you're choosing, and then heat press both sides at the same time, take it to the sewing machine, and sew around. So that's what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna show you how to sublimate your image onto your mask. So I have already cut out an image on the computer, or I'm sorry, I've already printed out an image um, on my sublimation printer. Um, and so that's what I'm gonna use uh, on my mask. And what I like to do before I lay this down to sublimate is, What I like to do before I lay this down to sublimate is I like to put a mark on which side, I don't know if you can see. I like to put a mark on which side I'm gonna be sublimating on. Um, you can use a, um, you can use a fabric marker so that it'll wash off or you can just use um, a pen or a pencil. I used a pen. Um, like I said, this is going to be for me, so it doesn't matter what the mark is, it's not going to show up anyway. But if you want to just be safe, you can use a, um, a fabric pen or a fabric marker. So what we're going to do now, I'm going to put my, um, my craft paper on my heat press and get ready to sublimate the mask. Okay. So I've already pre-pressed my mask. I'm gonna go ahead and set them. Kind of trying to peek over and make sure that everything is where I want it. And I'm not gonna get the whole logo on, but that's okay. Okay, so I have my sublimation sheet on cover it with a cover sheet. I have it on um, 400 for 35 seconds. And I have um, firm pressure.
Now, you can see that I didn't get some of it under the paper because I wanted this in a specific area so that I could get the logo. Um, I wasn't as precise with getting getting the whole paper covered, but all the other masks that I've made have just been um, repeat patterns. So I just, with the other mask that I've made, I've just laid it down on the, um, I've just laid the sheet down just over it and made sure that the pieces were underneath all the way on the sheet and it covered the whole thing as you can see. So this was just because I was being picky about where the words were, but when I go to um, sew the edges, this will get cut off by the serger so you actually won't see this part. Okay, so now we're just gonna sew together. You're gonna line up your edges. And I like to clip mine together. And like I said, I have a serger, but you could also use a regular sewing machine. Okay, so that edge is, whoops, sorry. There's a glare coming from my serger. That edge is sewn down. So I am going to tuck in my tails. You do not want to clip these because it will come unraveled. Um, you will want to get a knit picker. You can get this from any, any craft store. I got this from Joann's, I think it was like $2. You want to tuck in your tails. So you want to put it through. Tuck in the thread, put the little flap down and pull your thread through. And once your little thread is pulled through, then you have a nice neat seam and then you can clip off the excess this will make sure that this top part will not come unraveled and there won't be strings sticking out of your mask if you have a sewing machine all you have to do is backstitch and yours will not unravel You also probably should use um, the, the little sewing scissors. I just had regular scissors on hand, but you can use the, the sewing scissors. So, that is our completed mask. Okay, so that was it for this video. This is the mask. This is how it looks when it's completed. Um, as you can see, it actually doesn't take a lot of time. If you're wanting to sell these, 
You can make several of them in a very reasonable amount of time. I've already made a handful and um, they, I mean, they take no time at all. You can make these, like I said, you could sell these, you can make them for yourself, your friends, your family. Um, I personally will not, will probably not buy a mask anytime soon because these are so quick and easy. This pattern is made to be used specifically for neoprene fabric. I got the thin knit kind. You can get a thicker kind, um, whatever you find or whatever you feel like is most comfortable for your breathing. Um, this was most comfortable to me and it's the easiest to me to work with. So um, very easy, short project today. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you have any questions, make sure you put them in the comments below. If you haven't already, make sure you hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell for every time I do a new video. I am shooting for at least once a week. Lately, it's been twice. I will link everything down in the description below. Um, I'll even link my um, the serger that I used. It's a Singer um, professional sewing machine. And if you guys want, if you are sewers and you're looking for a serger and you want me to do a review on it, I would be more than happy to do a review. Um, so let me know in the comments if that's something you wanna see. Um, I'll also link my heat press. If you have a small heat press, this is a perfect project for that. You do not need a big heat press. This was, this is the, the large adult. And as you can see, I fit both pieces on there, no problem. I did an extra large adult for my husband and I fit both on the heat press with no problem. So it's something that you can absolutely do um, with a smaller heat press. Just wanted to put that in there. That is it. Very minimal sewing, very minimal work. You can use a very, you can use, I used an eight by 11 sheet of sublimation paper so it doesn't take a lot of ink either. Um, so very easy, very inexpensive project to do. If you like this video make sure you give it a thumbs up hit the subscribe button and i will see you next video bye